Okay, so today we're going to look at units, uh, and we're talking about units for file sizes, and there's a range of different things that we'll cover off in this topic. To start with, I want you to look at these two images and uh, draw comparisons between them, so things that are similar and things that are different. I'll pause, give you a chance to uh, have a think about that. Okay, so specification content, we're looking at the units of measurements, as you can see, bit, nibble, byte, kilobyte, megabyte, gigabyte, terabyte, and petabyte along with their equivalent file sizes. So we'll have a little look at what those actually mean. We'll look at how um, how data needs to be converted or why data needs to be converted into a binary format for a computer's process, and then how we actually perform some of the calculations. And in future lessons, you'll use these calculations in a bit more detail. I'll pause on the requirements, give you a chance to have a quick skim over that. So first of all, computers use binary because, um, as we've discussed in class, um, it's a case that they run on electricity. They are ultimately electrical systems that can either be switched on or off. With electricity, there is no sort of half on or half off. If you think of it like a light bulb with a switch, they're either on or off. And the CPU, the main sort of component in the computer that does all the sort of calculations and so forth, um, is built up of billions and billions of these tiny switches uh, called transistors. And those switches are either on or off, which are controlled by electrical pulses signaling uh, sent, being sent through them. Um, so ultimately, this comes back to that idea of these ones and zeros. Now, computers don't necessarily understand it as a one and a zero. The one and zero is just to represent that either being switched on or off. So binary individual digits, um, you may have, uh, have learned in the past about the ones and zeros that make up binary. A singular one or a singular zero by itself is referred to as a bit, and that's the smallest amount of storage that a computer can have. Four bits together make up a nibble. Eight bits together makes up a byte, and that becomes relevant when we look, to, uh, look at characters uh, in a future lesson. So a singular zero or one is a bit, nibble is four together, a byte is eight together. Moving up then, this table kind of shows you a relationship between them. So eight bits, as we know, makes a byte. 1,024 bytes makes up one kilobyte. 1,024 kilobytes makes up one megabyte. 1,024 megabytes makes up one gigabyte. 1,024 gigabytes makes up one terabyte, and 1,024 terabytes makes up one petabyte. Now, it's worth mentioning at this point that 1,024 um, is drawn from the fact that if you go up in multiples of two, like we do in binary, where we go 1, 2, 4, 8, 16, 32, 64, 1, 2, 8, if we were to carry on going to 2, 5, 6, 5, 12, 1, 0, 2, 4, which is where we get to 1, 0, 2, 4 being the unit of measurement. At GCSE, it's perfectly acceptable, though, to say 1,000 rather than 1,024. And I would suggest when you're doing the maths for any questions on this topic, try and use 1,000. It'll make it far, far easier uh, because when you do your exam, you won't be allowed a calculator. And rather than potentially making mistakes by multiplying out 1,024, it'd be far easier just to use 1,000. So it's perfectly acceptable to say that, for example, one gigabyte is made up of 1,000 megabytes. Here's some typical sort of storage uh, devices and their capacity. So a CD is typically 700 megabytes. A DVD, so something you might watch on a TV, 4.7 gigabytes or 4,700 megabytes, but we would represent it as 4.7 gigabytes as the most appropriate sort of file size. Blu-rays, so that's your HD sort of 1080p, full HD quality films is 50 gigabytes. And then USB memory sticks, typically between 64 and 256 gigabytes, but again, these can vary outside of that range. Your hard disk drives or your solid state drives that you'll have looked at in secondary storage, typically between one and four terabytes, and NVMe, which is kind of, kind of some of the latest sort of solid state forms of memory between 256 and one terabyte. Here's some examples of typical file sizes. Um, you've got some examples of things in kilobytes, so just picking out a couple of these. So a five page uh, pa paper, so if you were writing um, an essay and it took up five pages, you'd probably find that would likely take up about 100 kilobytes to store. In terms of megabytes, if we think about a three minute long song, so roughly three megabytes, so as you're downloading music on Spotify or so forth, you'll typically find it's around three megabytes to store a single song. In a gigabyte, again, um, as we mentioned, standard DVD has been 4.38, so for a standard DVD quality film, 4.38 gigabytes, so that capacity of 4.7 gigabytes that a DVD disc has gives us sufficient there. And then when we're looking at terabytes, just to kind of give you an example, 400,000 songs in two terabytes, so 200,000 songs in a one terabyte drive. This is why computers don't really seem to stretch much further than sort of two to maybe four terabytes of storage, because for most people's needs, that's more than enough storage on their computer um, for everything that they need. 
In terms of calculating file sizes, as mentioned already, use 1,000 rather than 1,024. It'll make it far, far easier. Uh, in respect to calculating file sizes, ultimately it's just multiplying um, everything out when we're working out the certain file size, and you'll see examples of this. So, for example, sound files, we calculate the sound file by working at the sample rate times its duration in seconds times its bit depth. Similarly for images, we times color depth, image height, width. Text files, again, bits per character and number of characters. It's all just multiplying out. When you multiply these all out, it gives you the file size in bits. It's worthwhile noticing and remembering that bits is the singular sort of zero and one, and that we would then want to try and convert that into something like bytes, kilobytes, and so forth. So the first thing we do is when we get the answer to our question, so in this example here, a text document of 120 characters, that's eight bits per character. If we multiply that out, is 960 bits. So when we then divide that by eight, that tells us how many bytes we've got. So 960 divided by eight being 120 tells us how many bytes we've got. There are lots of other examples in this presentation, and you can see in this particular example where we're looking at an audio file. So this is a 30 second audio file, which has got 44,100 samples at 16 bit. You can see this is 21,168,000 bits. We divide that by eight to work out how many bytes, and then we can either then divide it by 1,000 to work out how many kilobytes, so 2,646 kilobytes, divide it again by 1,000 to give us 2.646 megabytes. And that's how we can kind of give our file size in its most appropriate 